Hello students, in the previous lecture, we studied that laser light is highly directional, coherent, uh, in phase with each other and highly monochromatic. Now in this lecture, once again, we will specify temporal coherence and spatial coherence and we are going to derive its formula. This question can come in section C, that you derive a formula for coherence length, coherence time, etc. So before beginning Beginning to derive the formula, I will first remind you a few basics of wave frequency. Omega is angular frequency, which is equal to 2 pi f, where f is linear frequency. Frequency is equal to 1 upon t, where t is time period. Now, so uh, here 2 pi f, instead of f, I can write it in terms of coherence time, that is tau c, because f is equal to 1 upon t, and omega is 2 pi f. So instead of f, there is a del mu here. So from this formula, what happens? 2 pi, 2 pi gets cancelled. Del mu is equal to 1 upon tau c. Also, frequency is v is equal to f into lambda. That means velocity is equal to frequency into wavelength. So frequency is equal to c upon lambda. We will differentiate this equation d by dx of numerator upon denominator. C is a constant of velocity of light. So that term becomes zero. And on differentiating, we get del mu is equal to minus c upon lambda square d lambda. Now, both these equations are showing us del mu. So, we will equate them and we get an expression for coherent time that is minus lambda square upon c into d lambda. Putting this value of coherent time in the formula for coherence length that is L is equal to c tau, we get an expression for coherent length L is equal to lamb neglecting the negative sign etc del lambda equal to lambda square upon L where del lambda is the line width. This is the case of temporal coherence. Spatial coherence, as I told you, temporal coherence is longitudinal, spatial is transverse or lateral. So a beam is said to possess spatial coherence if the phase difference of the waves crossing two points on a plane perpendicular to the direction of propagation of beam is time independent. If there is no phase difference between two points, or if the phase difference between them is zero, then the two waves are coherent. Now, most simple and common example is your Young's double slit experiment. Here is your source of light. These are the two coherent sources which are going to emit light of same wavelength, same frequency and ultimately we will be getting a fringe pattern here. This is an example of spatial coherence. Now, Section C, we can get an option question where we have to derive an expression for spatial coherence and size of the source. So first, let us revise this diagram. C, we are having two sources of light here, the coherent ones. And here is the screen, which is kept at a distance A apart. Distance between the two coherent sources is L and the Fringes will be formed on this screen here. In order to get the path difference, we will be dropping a perpendicular from S1 on K and S2 K, or K S2 is going to be our path difference, which we have to derive. This is what we are going to do. So very simple, let us begin. S1, S2 will be the two pinholes separated by a small distance L in this case. And now we will find the minimum value of L at which pattern on the screen is going to disappear. Waves which are starting from S dash and reaching point O of the screen through S1 and S2 will have zero phase difference. So point O is going to be a bright fringe due to S. Now, the waves are starting from S dash and reaching at point O through S1 and S2 are having a path difference of 
then if it is lambda by 2, it is going to be a dark fringe at 2 due to S dash and hence point O will be dark. U simple angle is arc upon radius. So we are just going to approximate this angle here. Angle K S 2 upon uh, D that is this distance here D. This angle becomes theta here. So Ks2 is approximately theta into D. So now this distance A here, this distance A is equal to Sp plus Pq. Sp from this triangle is Ss dash upon theta and Pq is Q S2 upon theta. Now S S dash is L from the figure. Q S dash here. Q S2 is D by 2 because S1 S2 is D. Simple and a very simple addition you will do here. Putting this value of theta in the formula for path difference, we get K S2 equal to this much if l is very much greater than d2 we can just neglect this l here and interference pattern will disappear if l is equal to lambda a upon 2d if linear dimension of an extended source exceeds lambda a by 2d there will be no interference pattern on the screen if the extended incoherent source has a linear dimension roughly lambda a by d then for every point on the source there is a point at a distance lambda a 2d which is going to produce fringes so there are going to be no interference pattern and the distance lambda upon here alpha we will assume it as l upon a if d is very much lambda, uh, less than lambda by a then the distance lambda by alpha is termed as lateral spatial coherence width and you don't need to go into much detail just learn to derive this simple formula difference between spatial coherence and temporal coherence this question is asked a lot in section c spatial temporal temporal measure of average correlation between the value of a wave and itself delayed by time period of oscillation of the wave at any pair of time spatial cross correlation between two points in a wave for all times temporal cohe uh, coherence describes the correlation between the waves that are observed at different moments of time temporal time spatial space and spatial coherence describes the correlation between the waves at different points in space which are either lateral or longitudinal examples stabilized and monomode helium neon laser spatial coherence a plane wave that is perpendicular to its axis you can even draw a simple diagram where it's showing you the temporal coherence you can see and the spatial coherence here the space here the time effect okay now this question spontaneous stimulated and absorption see section a definition what is absorption what do you mean by spontaneous and stimulated emission of radiation compare spontaneous to stimulated etc and section b you can be asked to explain it in detail so what are the important features of stimulated emission discuss the essential requirements for producing a laser beam this i will tell you in the next heading and the stimulated photon propagates in the same direction as stimulating by the laser all this is now going to come here these questions are for section b see we know that all atoms keep lying in their ground state and in the excited state number of atoms are less suppose an atom is lying here two atoms are lying here in the ground state we give energy from external source einstein says energy is equal to h mu where h is planck's constant and mu is frequency of the light incident and suppose this energy matches the frequency matches with this specific photon which is lying here then it will absorb this energy 
and reach the excited state. This is known as absorption of radiation. Now, it is going to stay in the excited state for 10 to the power of minus 8 seconds, after which it is going to drop down on its own emitting light. When it is dropping down on its own, it is known as spontaneous emission. That means it is a natural phenomena. Now, in order to make laser, what we are going to do is we are going to trigger this function more of more atom photons dropping down so that more strong energy rays are obtained for which we will take the help of population inversion. We will take the help of optical cavity setup and we will take the help of pumping in order to obtain a laser light. So stimulated emission is the principle of laser action. That means we are stimulating or igniting the process further to get or speeding up atomic transitions from uh, lower to higher levels so that with the help of optical pumping and we will also take up a metastable state so that whatever emission falls down is a stimulated one giving us laser light. Now spontaneous and stimulated this is often asked see spontaneous as i told you is a natural process stimulated is not a natural process in spontaneous emission the intensity of light emitted is very less but in stimulated or ignited emission it is highly intense spontaneous emission light is observed obtained is not monochromatic but in stimulated it is monochromatic and spontaneous emission does not require external photon whereas the stimulated emission requires an external proton for its action. So how do we get the laser light in lab? We get it with the help of population inversion where we have done the atoms higher in the excited state compared to ground state. We have introduced a metastable state where atom is staying for more time compared to 10 to the power of minus 8 seconds and in order to get a highly directional beam we are taking help of reflecting mirrors at the end of the system. So once again next question what are Einstein coefficients derive Einstein relationship and this is asked in section B. Let us begin. What are Einstein coefficients? Einstein coefficients are mathematical quantities which are a measure of the probability of absorption or emission of light by an atom or molecule. So these coefficients are giving us the relationship between absorption coefficient and emission coefficient. Basically, it means how much light how much has been absorbed and how much is being emitted. That means input versus output. So Einstein relationship will just tell us how this is becoming dependent on the cubical power of frequency. So now suppose that let assembly of atoms in thermal equilibrium at a specific temperature be taken. Let phi represent the energy density of radiation for frequency mu and N1, N2 be the number of atoms per unit volume per unit time in energy state first and second. Then how many atoms are getting absorbed per unit volume per unit unit time is equal to N1 B1 to 5 where B1 2 is the constant of proportionality which is depending on the properties of states 1 and 2 and they are called Einstein coefficient for absorption of radiation. Similarly, whatever has been absorbed will be emitted out as spontaneous plus stimulated. So absorption is N1 B1 2 phi equal to N2 A2 1 plus 
N2, B2, 1, 5. And we get 5 equal to N2, A2, 1 upon N1, B1, 2 minus N2, B2, 1. And the accord, we will put the Boltzmann law here. And from Boltzmann law, we will put the values of N1 and N2 as e to the power of minus E1 upon KT equal to this putting these values and simplifying. Now, using the Planck's law of radiation, we get pi equal to this much. We will compare equation 1 and equation 2 and we find out the relationship between Einstein coefficient. You can see it is depending on the cubical power of frequency mu. All the rest of the terms are constants. Thank you.